Here we are in the site administration area looking at the appearance section and under themes we have the theme settings. There are quite a few settings that you do need to pay attention to here. Obviously the appearance of your Moodle site is really important and the majority of that is controlled through the theme. First of all we can have a theme list. So. Um, if you wanted to restrict the themes available, then you can actually provide those here. Um, as it says, just use the uh, theme short name and just put a comma between each one. If you are designing themes, you would probably switch on the theme designer mode and that just uh, helps with the caches and make sure that as you're developing a theme and, and testing it, you see the up-to-date version. Uh, under no circumstances should you have that switched on once your theme is kind of in production, once your site is in production, because it will slow things down. There are options as well around whether we allow users to choose their own theme. I think that's a fantastic option and would always suggest that you have even if you have a strong corporate or company theme or school theme that you need, you can still create versions of that, perhaps in, in uh, colours that have more contrast, perhaps with fonts that are larger, etc. And then you can give users the choice of which of those themes they actually use, which suits them. Uh, if you're using a, a, your site and you're outside, for example, on an iPad, you might want to use a theme that has more contrast. If you're on a small handheld device, you may want a theme that is uh, more simple. So don't just think, oh, we need to have the same theme for everyone. You can create versions of your main theme and then allow users to choose between those. Course themes can be set important to realize that if you allow course themes to be set and the teacher chooses the theme then that will override everything the site theme uh, and, and importantly the user theme so the user can't choose their own theme for that course anymore that course is forced to what that teacher wants and um, I might suggest that just because the teacher thinks one of these themes is really good doesn't necessarily mean it's the best choice for the user. So um, something to bear in mind if you do enable course themes. We can also enable category themes. And again, I would urge caution there because that really can slow your site down a lot. There are certainly cases, for instance, in corporate environments where you might want a slightly different theme for each department or perhaps you have a Moodle site that is used by two or three schools and you want different themes for each school who have their own courses in a, in a different category, but um, it does slow your site down or it can certainly slow your site down. So definitely use that with caution. It is possible to allow users to alter the theme based on the URL. So it is possible to kind of add the theme statement on the end of the URL. That's probably not something that you want every user doing because it's kind of quite awkward for them to remember that and to use that. But certainly if you're a theme designer or an administrator or you're just testing out how different themes look and feel, then that can be a useful function because it means you don't have to change the main theme for the site. You can actually quickly just change it in your own browser. And then a couple of settings around, do we want users to be able to hide blocks so they can collapse blocks and, and show blocks? That, that can really help, particularly on small screens or with people that, that want to maximize the main area they're looking at, the main content. Um, some people can find it confusing if they accidentally hide a block and not sure how to get it back. So if you do enable that, it's probably worth some user education to make sure they understand how to get them back. And the same probably applies to the next setting, which is whether you allow blocks to use the dock. So in this case, users can actually move the blocks to the dock at the side and then bring them back. And again, if people aren't used to doing that, very easy to lose them or not find them. So again, use that one with caution or, or certainly explain what's going on. It is possible to create a custom menu in Moodle. And probably the easiest way is just to copy the example code that's there. 
and then you can start to change this to whatever you want. So um, it, it's a very simple uh, kind of hierarchical menu system. So it's a very easy way to put some links at the top of your site and menus that can help visitors or, or logged in users actually navigate around some of the main areas of your site. Not to be confused with that is the user menu item, which is actually from the user's menu up here. By default, the items that will be shown in here are grades, messages, and preferences, and you're, you're, you're told that here. But do note that in that menu, dashboard, profile, and logout are also automatically added and you can't take those away because they are seen as kind of fundamental to the operation of this menu. You can, however, add new items. And you'll see that I've got edit profile here, which isn't a standard item. It isn't one of these three and it isn't any of the forced ones, which are dashboard, profile and logout. And I've done that simply by adding another line into the user menu items here. Um, there is a good explanation about how to do this and how it works and the Moodle Docs is very good on this so if you do need to add some extra items in there it won't take you too long to work out how that's done. Finally we have device detection. This enables Moodle to understand what type of device the user is actually using Okay, because uh, computers and browsers actually send information when they are accessing websites and from there it is possible for you to identify specific types of devices and then to perhaps provide them with a specific theme. The theme selector simply allows us as you may expect to choose between the different themes Standard themes at the time I'm recording this are Boost, Clean, and More. And you'll notice in the center there, I've also installed another theme called Essential. We can also clear the theme caches or caches, depending on how you like to pronounce that. And that simply ensures that, that we're getting rid of all the old CSS and making sure that any new themes or any new updates and, and changes are going to be reflected. They're going to be served out straight away rather than old versions. I'm going to leave Boost for a moment and just mention, first of all, the clean theme. This is the most basic theme in Moodle and gives us uh, the absolute basic controls, whether we invert the navbar, so that just switches around the background and foreground colors and can increase the contrast for users, so that, that can be very useful. We can add a logo, of course, as we'd expect, some instructions in terms of the, the height and the size you should be looking for, and also a small logo, which is usually, usually just a, a minimized version, although it could be slightly different. We also have control about whether we display the site name alongside the small logo. That, that can look really nice. And then there's an area for custom CSS, uh, cascading style sheets. So this is addis additional information that a designer can use to style this clean theme. And that may be as simple as just changing the color of all the heading styles within this site. So that can be used fairly easily to just tweak the basic CSS, the basic formatting and, and styling of this theme. And it's also possible to add information in as a footnote for your site, which is usually a copyright notice, but can be lots of other information as well. Another standard theme in Moodle is the more theme. And this is really very similar to the clean theme. As you'll see, if I just scroll down to here, we have those same controls we've just seen, whether the navigation bar is inverted, the logo, the small logo, whether we have the name next to the small logo, custom CSS, and the footnote. So all the same controls there. And further up, what we basically have is some simple controls around the colors that are being used on this site. So the main text color, 
the color that's used for links and the background color obviously they are probably the three essentials we then have control over adding a background image and how that image is displayed whether it's a repeating image so it's a it's a small image that that's repeated as a pattern or whether we have um whether we align a static image and keep it fixed so maybe more appropriate for using a photograph for example and then we can also control the main content background color and the secondary background color which is the accents and highlights and blocks if all you want to do is have a clean theme and then be able to tweak some of the colors and the logos and the main elements the more theme is going to give many administrators enough control we also have the boost theme so the aim of the boost theme is to provide a unified experience across lots of different devices so that as people move from their desktop to their tablet to their mobile phone it's going to look the same the there are two standard presets within the boost theme which are default and plain uh, i'll come back to that in a second and we then have a brand color which is essentially the accent color for this theme so boost will set the main visual appearance and control of the theme but we are then able to add in what we call theme presets and i've added in two theme presets here and we can see that we're now able to choose between those different presets so if I switch to a different preset, I'm still using the boost theme, but I'm now using a preset within that theme. So we can see here, because I've selected the more candy preset, it's changed quite significantly the way the background and areas and blocks are actually styled. Equally, I could have selected one of the other presets that's available. And here we can see that the preset boost image we'll add a, a really nice image to our header and it also adds images to the login page and you can change those images within the preset files but uh it just just really demonstrating how although we're still using the boost theme there are presets within that which can quite dramatically change it as i mentioned and you will have noticed i have also installed an additional theme on this site called essential this is one of the most popular themes in Moodle that's been developed over uh, many years now. There are a number of, I'm not going to go through every setting here, it's a very very flexible theme. Just picking out a few ideas, there are lots of controls around whether you want custom scroll bars and floating submit buttons, that's kind of the interface to, to the essential theme. Uh, in terms of colour, you have an amazing amount of control over the colors used throughout the interface, including versions, alternative versions. So you can make up kind of a color, color variations of your theme, which, which can be chosen. There are also some really nice features in terms of, for instance, a slideshow. So you can create a, a slideshow on your front page usually which people will see when they first visit your site maybe with images and, uh, and the latest news or, or items that you're currently promoting for example and you can also on the front page we can enable what we call marketing spots so marketing spots enable you to just create small areas on that front page for promoting certain services or courses or options um, difficult to envisage all these there are so many options in this essential theme but if i just bring up a screenshot so this is a screenshot from one of our own sites and at the top you can see the slideshow area and this is just a static screenshot obviously on the website it actually rotates through a number of promotional images and links and you can also see that there are three marketing areas and these can be changed you know once a month or every few months to highlight different services or options or, or new offerings so the essential theme 
gives you uh, a level of control that isn't just about the color and the logo but allows you to do a lot more in terms of, of how your site may look and operate. I do just want to mention uh, a little bit about installing themes. That isn't done from the appearance area because a theme is a plugin like many, many other elements within Moodle. So in fact, if I go to the plugins overview and choose additional plugins, I can see here that I've installed this essential plugin. It's a theme, so installing it just like any other uh, module or block and so on. If, if you're an administrator that's quite happy with the back end of servers, then you probably don't use this GUI interface. You, you may do this other ways using Git or perhaps installing modules via FTP to the server and so on. Or you may use uh, the GUI option which is um, available in Moodle so I can check for any updates if it needed updating I'd be informed of that here and then be able to update that just uh, by clicking the install update and then Moodle would go through the standard validation process to make sure that theme is the correct version for uh, this version of Moodle and I haven't said that but hopefully if you're an administrator you know that that you must always use a theme that is correct for the version of Moodle.